Welcome back, everybody, to We Talk Phil. I am your host, Barry, joined by Clayton, as always. How are you going, Clayton? <laughs> Hi, Barry. I am experiencing technical difficulties. We as are we all, all experience are tonight. technical difficulties. Um, oh. This is what's been happening for the past week, I suppose. Well, last week, the reason why we were delayed was because of me, and I just got super busy with life and everything like that, and that sometimes happens, but we're back doing another episode. We are here to our loyal listeners that do stick around, so thank you very much for sticking around. Um, and we will try not to miss another week. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Uh, <laughs> no way, kicking it. We are still here. Discord is breaking on us as we speak. So if we all suddenly disappear or parts of this episode are missing, yeah, uh, don't blame me. Blame I don't know the fucking automatons from Helldivers because they're exactly. hacking our fucking Discord. Yep, and. <laughs> That is what's exactly is right. going on. We didn't kill enough of them this past weekend, yeah. so. That's true. We'll get right on that. But, uh, <laughs> our, uh, but, 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 but before we do that, we're going to get right on to the news section. The news. Falling apart. Oh, man. Oh, oh yo, I even got a new right. news I intro <laughs> um, button thing. Um, I had it all set up, and you don't even get to hear it. But the I can't even do. fucking hear it because your soundboard's not working for me. So who the fuck knows? Maybe it's it'll work in mine. the end. I, I you can know. watch the video. <laughs> Whatever. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll watch the video later. No, I won't. Okay, news. <laughs> we got a bunch of trailers this week. The first one that I'd like to get out of the way straight away is for Bad Boys Ride or Die. Uh, are you a fan of the Bad Boys franchise, Barry? The first two, and then, then I gave up. I can't even remember the third one. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I didn't know there was a third one. I didn't even realize they were making a fourth one. <laughs> Neither. And the trailer, I don't give a shit. It looks mid. I don't care. All right, yeah. moving on. Uh, we got a trailer for something that actually looks rather cool. It's uh, the HBO series The Penguin, um, based the yes. first spin-off from Matt Reeves' Batman film, uh, starring Colin Farrell, and it's it's just more gangster shit set in Gotham, and I kind of yeah. love it. Like, yeah, no, I like, like am enjoying it so much already. Like I watched that trailer probably like five times by now just to try and like see any subtle details or anything like that in the background to like certain characters. I don't think Robert Pattinson is actually in this at all. He might make a cameo or something like know. that. Um, but I, yeah, it's yeah. kind of interesting. It's, it's more of just, yeah, the Batman Matt Reeves Gotham universe that he's trying to make. And so it all gets scrapped by James Gunn eventually when he casts his new Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? I'm sure this show is going to be good at least. It's a cool, unique take on a character that we know and love, and I really want to see what they do with it. So I'm very yeah. excited to check that out uh, when that comes out sometime in spring, I believe. But okay. uh, we've got a couple more trailers uh, before that. Uh, the next one I'd like to talk about is Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, coming September 6th. Wow. Uh, is a sequel to the what I'd probably call cult classic supernatural comedy from the 80s, starring yep. Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, and a bunch of other people. Um, did you watch this trailer? Yeah, no, I watched it. What did I you loved think? it. <laughs> I'm just like, yep, I cannot wait to see this movie. Um, the only thing is, though, like, um, yeah. it's got like a so, such like a phenomenal cast as well, like, Willem Dafoe is also in this movie, uh, and there was, like, yeah, no, nothing right. of his yeah. character in the trailer whatsoever. Um, but, yeah, I'm down for it. It's, like, the original people all came back to do it. Like, you got Michael Keaton on board, Winona Ryder on board, and, like, all new set of characters and actors all on board, and I'm just like, yeah. I'm down for it. You know, give me more Tim Burton stuff. But So. Yeah. I'm also down for it. I kind of wish that they did the original planned sequel for Beetlejuice where he goes Hawaiian. I feel like that would be a really interesting sequel. That would have been. Are you aware of, yeah, Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Why not? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. It was it was the original planned sequel after the first one was a hit. They're like, Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian, and then it never got made, uh, for better or worse. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they went off to make Batman, uh, and then it was like, away. oh, that's so much better. <laughs> yeah, he... uh, we're, I'm very glad that he did that instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving away to another legacy sequel. This is for Alien Romulus, a movie that yes. actually looks really good. 
Uh, it's considering it's a modern alien film, and I'm saying it looks good, those two usually don't go together. Uh, what do you? What were your thoughts about this trailer? First time watch? Yeah. Uh, well, I was starting to get very skeptical about it because, what, it's not too long away um, until the movie comes out, and I was like, they haven't revealed a trailer or anything for it, and I was starting to get worried about it because normally when they don't release trailers until, like, a, a month or two out, mm. it's normally, like, a bad film. Um, but yeah, after watching this trailer, I'm just like, I'm sold. I'm sold on it already. The, I f- forget the director's name for it um, and the writer, but he's the guy that did Don't Fede Breathe. Jay Alvarez. That's the guy. Yeah. Um, and I remember like how phenomenal like that film was yeah. and everything, like the spooky, the thriller elements to it. And it, by the looks of it, we're going back to like how the original Alien film was done, like more horror thriller-esque, but yeah. just like more of it and more gore. It looks like they just like put all the gore in the high octane up. <laughs> Of that a lot more so i'm looking forward oh, to it hell it's definitely yeah. like yeah top five films i'm looking forward to this year yeah i know i definitely agree the first alien film is like one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever made one of my favorite horror films yep. of all time so seeing something that kind of it, but on with a modern spin i'm very much like okay i want to see this film and i really hope that it's done well and i'm definitely going to be first in line to watch it because i love alien <laughs> so yeah fuck yeah, yeah. No, it's looking um, good okay yeah final trailer something that is splitting the internet right now uh and i'm not quite sure which sides of the fence we're on uh it's okay. star wars the acolyte the new disney plus series uh-huh. coming out june 4th yep yep yeah okay Barry. so um, we, we saw a poster for this and I, it was like a lightsaber with like a blood trail. Yes. And immediately from that, I was like, I don't know what this is going to be. Yep. I was like, okay, I'm kind of, I don't know. That looks a little out of place. Just and then a little we got bit. this trailer. And I was, and I was like, I'm not sure if I'm feeling it, Barry. And I, I don't know if you felt the same. Yeah. No, something does feel like very off about this show already um i feel like in the trailer they might just be the case of we're gonna put all the best things we filmed in the show into the one trailer um yeah i don't know like it it looks interesting and i like the aspect of where they're trying to go with the story they're doing like high republic era which is something like that hasn't been really touched on yet too much besides the books and stuff like that um so it's like I will watch it, obviously, when it comes out, because it is Star Wars. I'm still very skeptical about it. There are a few elements in it where I'm just like, that seems a bit kind of odd and out of pocket for Star Wars, and it's just like, are they going to go maybe too far with the adult side to it? Because then that would just ruin it, where I feel like Andor and Rogue One established like how far you could take um like Star Wars to a mature approach, hundred percent type of thing. Yeah, and I feel like this might be going like a bit too far, or maybe a bit too less. We don't know. We haven't seen the full show yet. Only like a s- small trailer. I don't so. know. Yeah, um, the one thing <clears throat> that stuck with me is a quote from the showrunner Leslie Headland saying that this is uh, Frozen meets Kill Bill, <laughs> and I was like, "What does okay. that mean?" That is. What? That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I was like, so it, that huh? is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. So it's just, so it's a musical, but they kill like everyone. Ice powers. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's too many things that those two words going together, like those two films together, could mean. Yeah. Kind of scared. Why Frozen meets Kill Bill? Shouldn't it just be? I don't know. Star Wars, but a hundred years before. I like. I don't know. If. It feels off. Something feels off, and I can't yeah. put, quite put my finger on it watching this trailer. Well, we'll I find out when, when, it's, the show yeah, in June. when it starts. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll find out then. All right, moving away from trailers, we got a bunch of news stories this week. Our uh, first one I'd like to mention is Marvel's Thunderbolts is in full production. Wow. A short behind the scenes video. From Florence Pugh of her just walking around the set showing us things she probably wasn't supposed to show us. Probably um, not. no spoilers, nothing that gives anything away, don't worry. But the movie is in full production and it seems to be going well so far, so that's yep. good. That's good. Um liking that. Could could be interesting. Yeah, all right. Uh next story is Christopher Nolan and his wife Emma Thomas 
I are receiving a knighthood and a damehood from the king hey. after the two films. And nice. I thought, hey, that was really cool. They're yeah. Honestly deserved. I feel like those two um, yep. together, incredible creative team, created some of the greatest movies of the last 20 years. So, like, sure, I'm yeah. very much for that recognition. So um, when I go and cool. meet him next time, I'll just be like, so how are you, sir, Christopher Nolan? Next time. Yes. Next time, yeah, just next weekend, you know. And he, we and we have drinks like, all the time. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, peasant. <laughs> You're not a knight. <laughs> I am a sir. Yeah, he's a knight now. He can call you a peasant. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, uh, next story is we got an announcement for Joker 2. Uh, and this film is a musical. And that concerned me because I was very much confused about how this sequel is going to be a musical. Well, mm-hmm. apparently... It's more of a jukebox musical, as it's described, yes. and features covers of up to 15 well-known songs. Yep. So they're not original songs. It's just Joker's going to, like, break out into, like, Take On Me or something mid-kissing Harley Quinn. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> if that happens, I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stand up in the cinema and just applause <laughs> in that single moment if he does that. If he sings... Um, That's why Katie we see Perry's movies. Fireworks <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> While kissing Lady Gaga. <laughs> While kissing That's, Lady Gaga. That is a burn, honestly. That is the best <laughs> moment in cinema history. I, I am. I don't know what that means for the film because all it's like, I know is I to be am a musical then? looking forward to it. <laughs> Um, this might be again I'm my favorite film of all time. To just how confused I am <laughs> with this fucking movie. Oh my god! I need to go oh. see this film because yes. I have no idea what this movie is. Yep, yep. <laughs> and it, it's gonna be great. I, it's I'm there. It's driving for it. me crazy. It's yeah. turning me into the Joker of thinking about this fucking. Movie. I think that's the whole point. <laughs> they want people okay. to be like, "We are society Maybe. now." Or a society. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, Moving away. Another story that really surprised me is uh, Happy Gilmore 2 is a thing. Uh, the yes. script is done and it's starting to go into development. Uh, Netflix picking it up. I did not expect a Happy Gilmore sequel. No. I definitely don't want a Happy Gilmore sequel because I do not think it's going to be good. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Who knows? I, Netflix Adam like Sandler a... movies are either like uncut gems or that fucking Hubie Halloween. There's like no in between. So, yep. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I feel like he's established himself now as being like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. I make enough money because what? He was the highest sure. grossing celebrity last year, which we found out through a list thing um, a few weeks ago. And I was just like, what? Like, he must be getting paid a shit ton yeah. of money from Netflix um, to be doing this type of stuff. Because he just did that, uh, yeah. well, that Spaceman film with the, one of the Safidi brothers again, oh, which yeah. I still haven't yeah, watched yet, watch with the weird alien spider thing. Nah. And that looks interesting. Yeah. Um, and then he's just like, oh, I'm going to do Happy Gilmore 2. I'm like, what is up with this man? <laughs> All right, okay. Fucking okay, sure. What, yeah. Why? Why? Okay. <laughs> Cool. You know what I want? I want to see The Wedding Singer too. I want that. Because that that's be my cool. favorite Adam Sandler film. And I want just a modern wedding singer. It's just him and doesn't get a job because no one hires wedding bands anymore. So he's just really depressed about it. And that's the whole movie. Yep. <laughs> it's yep. Uncut yep. Gems, but he sings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, oh, it's always good. Like, yeah, when I want that. comedic actors do something like that where they don't go like full dramatic, but they like, bring in like the comedy side and also like dramatic side like to their movie yeah that's why still yeah. um was it punch drunk love is like probably my favorite adam sandler film yeah yeah um that's mm-hmm. a wonderful film to watch and everything like that where he did have that that quirky comedic mm-hmm. side to him as, as his character but then it also was a very like serious type of um movie in a way um and i think that comes down to the, obviously the, the writer for that as well and the director um True, but, that's true. Yeah, no, like, I, I'm down for it. Like, I'll watch Happy Gilmore 2 when it comes out. Will I like it? Probably not, but hey. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, moving away uh, to some sad news this week. As we uh, found out something, uh, the, I found out this morning, uh, Kodomo 
the actor from Gen V uh, was tragically killed in a motorcycle accident this weekend. Uh, oh. He was only 27. He played in Gen V, if you remember. Uh, Damn. Correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't wow. know if you saw this, because the oh. IGN only posted it this morning. He was 27. Uh, yeah. And apparently, like, the day after was when they're supposed to sit down for the table read of season two. Yeah, because they're set to go into going production into in production weeks. in a couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah, well, not anymore. It's being pushed back as everybody tries to figure out what's going to happen with the show and takes time to really mourn the loss of their friend and colleague. Uh, but in a tragic way, Yeah. really young, and I w he was my favorite character in the show. He was such a good actor, and it really sucks that yeah. he was taken like that. Wow. Terrible that news. Is, that is terrible um, news. So much for a happy Easter weekend. Tell me about it. Um, but yeah, it means that everyone over there is going to have a lot of work to do. Uh, no word on if it's going to be recast. His character is going to be rewritten in some way. Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, that's up for them to figure out whatever they decide. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, condolences to his family. Um, as yes. always, 27 is way too young. He had a promising career, that's for sure. Um, Damn, the guy was basically my age. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's crazy. All right. Uh, I'm not going to end on a sad story because I'm going to end on something wacky. Um, Always the wacky. Barry, I have a question for you. Oh, no. Um, a piece of wood from a movie with a boat in it. Uh, if you were going to buy a piece of wood from a movie with a boat in it, how much money would you expect to pay for a piece of wood from a movie with a boat in it? Ooh, anywhere between $30,000 to $300,000. Okay, well, all right, let me give you some context. The door from the end of Titanic, the one that Rose uh, floats in the waters on, a big, like, what, like a two-meter square piece of wood. Something uh, was like recently that. Sold. The one that killed Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, we all know about it. It killed Leonardo DiCaprio. That piece of wood in particular killed Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep. How, and so how much do you think that sold at auction? You said 30 to 300, right? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm thinking because the film that it is, and we just had the 20th anniversary or 30th anniversary for that film, something like that. Because, uh, like, James Cameron was in our very own backyard the other weekend and everything like that. And That's true, I, he was. disappointed I didn't get to go to his thing. Um, yeah. Maybe, like, four to 500K because of the film. Four to five? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, it sold for seven hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, three quarters of a million. That's insane. Like, that is you can insane. buy a whole ass like you can buy like a replica of the you Titanic, can buy the Titanic, Titanic size. <laughs> 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 Probably could for that amount of money. That was insane. Um I'm sure one lucky rich person is going to really enjoy having that in their, like, hallway. It's Leonardo something. DiCaprio. I think it belongs oh, the in the museum. The clone of Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. um, that's, just, like, yeah. staring at it. He's like, I remember when you killed the former version of myself. Yeah. Now he's going to get his revenge. Pretty much. I think it belongs in a museum. Yeah. Uh, over yeah. anything. So does but Harrison Ford. Sure. But, Some you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it belongs in a museum. Yeah, but... I mean, I don't know. It's just going to sit in some rich person's garage yeah. for that amount of money. Like so, a yeah, lot of cool. movie props and stuff like that, which is kind of sad. <laughs> it is very sad because it's like James Cameron was here in Fremantle yeah. uh, the other week talking about the Titanic at like a big showing at the museum there. Yep. Like how yep. amazing would a piece from that movie in this museum be? Yeah. Like if James Cameron showed up with that door and was like, hey, keep it here. Like, that not? would be insane. That would yeah. be amazing. Um, and that's where the piece like that deserves to be. And sorry to get a little Indiana Jones on you. It belongs in a museum. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. it actually does. Like, like, things, us... things like that, though, oh, like, yeah. should be in museums. Like there, there was a case recently of um, like all these old props that were found. Um, because is it Anthony Daniels, the guy that plays C three PO? Yeah, he just yeah. basically gave a whole bunch of his collection away recently over the yeah. years when he's collected um it was all up on prop store and some of them went for like millions of dollars like some of these oh, pieces yeah. um and it was just like they're just going to like these big time rich people to put in their houses and not yeah. people to see or anything like that which is kind of like you know like for filmmaker filmmakers and stuff like that um like you want to see them you want to see how it's made like it should be at museums and, like shown off and everything like that 
because you know that's how we learn from these things and you know obviously we've got set designers yeah. and costume yeah, designers yeah, yeah. and stuff like that it's like you know it'd be kind of cool for them like the future of them like could see it all and see how they're all made and yeah. stuff like that yep. so but yeah you know rich people life oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, rich people do their rich people things. But yep. that brings us to the end of the news section. Uh, I'd say quite a long one, but just lots of shit happened over the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, we've got two very cool things to bring you to you today. Um, oh, you probably, yes, we do. Oh, you've, you've heard one already. I'm sure that you've caught the hint. To me, my X-Men. The X-Men have returned, Clayton. Yeah. The X-Men are back. X to me, are my X-Men. To me, my X-Men. Yeah. And it's the original oh, cast. Boy. Everyone came back for it. And I am so happy. Yeah, man. I am reliving okay, my so childhood. We are... <laughs> oh, we are going to get into the first three episodes of X-Men 97, the newest Marvel show to hit Disney+. Plus. Uh, it's obviously uh, a, basically a continuation of the 30-year-old X-Men show from 1997. Yep. Uh, they've got five seasons, and this is just a sixth season of that. Uh, yeah. Things are changed, some things are different. Most actors that are still alive have returned to the show. Yep. Um, it's been written by the same people. It's everyone from that's come back to it and it has been a hell of a blast so far. Don't you agree? Oh yeah. No, like this is like phenomenal to see. Cause it's so funny. Like, um, watching this. And then I remember watching the, obviously the live action X-Men from the Fox universe and everything like that. And like for a lot of people's mindsets, that's all that they like, obviously remember that was their first introduction into X-Men was like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and, all that type of thing. It's like, no, this is like the proper X-Men is this animated show. This is how the X-Men are meant to be like. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I was so happy <laughs> when this came out and everything like that. Unfortunately, yeah, it took us me a while to watch them all. But, you know, I finally got around to watching them and I'm so happy I did. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah, this, ep this, this show, oh, my God, it kicks it off straight out of the bat with episode one. Um, just throwing us kind of straight into it, we're introduced to the newest character, Sunspot, um, who is a relatively new uh, X-Men character in comics. I, yes. I don't think he's yep. been around too long. Um, but I don't mind him. I haven't really seen him in anything. I don't definitely haven't read anything with him in it. Um, but... He's our sort of uh, what Jubilee was in the original series, yes, at yes. least for this first two episodes, our forte back into it. Um, and then this episode here is basically just everyone explaining who they are and then they fight some bad guys and it's just classic fucking X-Men. Uh, it does everyone right. Yep. Storm and Cyclops steal the show. Um, yep. I don't even know where to begin because this show was fucking awesome, just like start to finish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing because it's just like so great. Um, so obviously people that don't know and never watched the original series from the 90s and everything like that, um, obviously the, the final episode was um, Charles Xavier being well, murdered and everything like that. And then basically it was this world where basically because of that, humans and mutants realize that they could live in harmony together and everything like that. And where this one obviously takes up a year after those events where basically Cyclops is now trying to run the X-Men and everything like that. He's trying to be what Professor, what Xavier was to them all and trying to organize them all. But they're still obviously not over the fact that, yeah, Xavier is dead and that the world is still hates mutants, essentially. That's, that's still the gist of it all. Like people are very unsure about them yeah. um, and stuff like that. And yeah, it's this kind of, well, first of all, let's talk about Cyclops. Because it has been, well, since the original <laughs> animated show where we've actually seen Cyclops done properly. All the live action movies that they yeah. did with Cyclops and stuff like that have never put him in the limelight or never this type of glory before, where he is meant to be the, the leader of the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. 
Yeah, they definitely do Cyclops justice here. Um, he this is the best portrayal of the character we've seen in comic books. There is no better live action portrayal of this character, or even most of these characters. Um, look at like Storm or yep. Beast. I uh, even like apart from apart from like Wolverine, kind of everyone in this is a better portrayal than they do in the fucking movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, um. The, who who's our main team at the start? Okay, so our main team we've got yeah Cyclops, Jean Grey, who is pregnant. Um, yes, as of now. that's so right. She's kind of chilling she's on the there. sidelines for the most part. Yep. Uh, we have Storm, Beast is there. Bishop is there. Yep. The future. Yep. Cool. We have Morph. Uh, Bishop's always we have a character. Jubilee. We've got Rogue. Morph. We've got Gambit. Rogue. I forgot Rogue and Gambit. They're like my favorite. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So out of out of that lineup, who is who was your favorite X Men growing up? Actually, as a kid, who oh, was your favorite? It was Cyclops. Cool? Uh, like of the animated really? show. Yeah, it was Cyclops because I was like, you look he, like he's so it cool. Would be Cyclops. Yeah, um, you, like you look like it would be. Cyclops. And that's the thing. I remember them watching the live action movies with um, is it? Oh, what's his name? The actor that played him, uh, John ooh, Marston. Yeah, yeah um, something, whatever. Yeah, something. John Marston. I was like the guy from Sonic. Yeah, the, that guy <laughs> from Sonic. Uh, and then it was just like, yeah. what is this shit? And then it just became. I became Wolverine fanboy, and then from that became Deadpool. Um, <laughs> that became the session. Yeah, I mean, fair. <laughs> that's fair. I did not grow up when this show was airing, of yep. course, but a shit ton of reruns of this show. Oh yeah, and in particular, like. The animated show called Wolverine and the X Men, yes. which opened up with Professor X in a coma, and I thought that yeah. was really cool, and that put me onto this animated series when I was like seven or eight. Yep, I am. I managed to rewatch it. I don't even know where I found it, but I managed to rewatch the entire thing, and I was just immediately like blown away by everything. I always thought I think, I think Rogue might have been my favorite, just like throughout the whole thing. It was her and Gambit? Yeah, were always cool fucking ones. Yeah, no, Gambit, it would Wolverine, be like my, my, my second favorite out of like this this show in particular. Um, like Gambit's such a cool comic book character as well. So cool. And this is like, oh my gosh, they're finally like doing him justice again and actually like showing his powers <laughs> properly and not in that shitty live action True. movie they did with Gambit. He was in <laughs> X-Men Origins, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We forget about that one. All right, but yeah, so the team, a whole bunch of people in it, uh, it's crazy. It throws us straight into it. Uh, everyone's alive. Everyone's chilling. Um, basically, the plot of the, at least this first episode is the guy that killed Professor X is back, and he's working with Master Mold to create Sentinels, right? I think yep. that was the guy. That was the um, guy. And then the X-Men show up, and they stop him. Yeah, he, they were um, working with Taft again, who was yeah. like a, a villain from the original series. A lot of it was just like an homage to, like, obviously the original series and stuff like that, a lot of the villains as well and everything. Um, and then obviously mm. at the end of that all, we find out, uh, Magneto comes into the fray being like, I now own everything. And he's like, to oh, me, no. my X-Men. Well, he now, Magneto yeah, is the X-Men. <laughs> Charles Xavier left in his will that when he dies, uh, th then Magneto gets control of the X-Men. Yes. Uh, and that's where the second episode opens up from that cliffhanger is it's revealed that Magneto has been doing good. Saving yeah. people, he's been helping people. He's trying to do it Charles's way as like a final promise to his friend, sort of thing. Yeah. At least that's what we think so far. It yes. wouldn't surprise me if Magneto's up to some sly sneakiness, but as oh, of right now, yeah. he's he's doing good. Yeah. And this, at least from now, is pulling from a comic book line where he did try and do good. Yep. But obviously it's Magneto, so it's only a matter of time before he becomes a bad guy again. So <laughs> we can it's only bound wait to for happen. that. Yep. Um. But yes, the second episode, um, Magneto does good, and then he's put to trial. Yep. Like, the government show up, and they're like, hey, man, we're going to arrest you. We got plastic guns. And then Magneto's like, yeah, but what about your helicopters? And then he lifts the helicopters up, and he turns their helicopters towards them. And I thought, like, that was the moment where I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, they're doing Magneto justice, too, because he's so smart. Yeah. And, like, funny in this. It's... But not, not well, intensely that's the thing, funny, yeah. like, just dramatic. Yeah. Or always, and even with all, like, the movies and stuff like that, I feel like the one character they've always done well is actually Magneto. I, like, loved every version of Magneto every, that yeah, we've seen so far. Or, like, the, the, the actor. 
Uh, I, that's the thing. I actually yeah. really like Michael Fassbender's Magneto. I don't like the direction where they took yeah. him a few times and stuff like that, but I like the idea of Michael Fassbender being a young, younger Magneto. He, I feel like he always pulled it off and could do that more dramatic side to it and stuff like that. Because yeah. yeah. you look at like Days of Future Past, which is like one of the better that's live true. action films. Like he was so great as Magneto and same thing as First Class as well. And mm-hmm. there was like a mm-hmm. couple mm-hmm. elements in a um, couple scenes in Apocalypse, which was like really cool where he like tried to have a family and stuff like that. And like Michael Fassbender can pull off those dramatic scenes so well, but then the rest of the movie just ruins it. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even watch Apocalypse. That's how bad it was. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, there's like this one moment in there with Magneto where he's like trying to live a normal life and actually has a family in the woods somewhere where like humans come and like basically kill his family because he tried to help a guy type thing. Uh, And it was like, it's like literally the only good moment in that entire film because then he just slaughters everyone. That's which crazy. is Magneto, yeah, which no, is Magneto. <laughs> I think I watched, like, <clears throat> Days of Past, thought it was really good, and then yep. apart from Logan, just did not watch anything else X-Men related after that. I was like, fuck all this shit. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad that I watched this show, yeah. because, yeah, Magneto's put to trial, yes. uh, and the X-Men basically go and help him. They're like, well, all right, you seem to be doing good. I guess we'll, yeah. we'll um, make sure that everything's going Hear well. Him out. Yeah. Um, yeah, at least hear him out, which is great because I love that the X Men do that. They're very much, especially this show in particular, has done it very well. Of the X Men do look after anyone trying to be good. They they don't just and they always doing the right thing no matter who. Yes. And it's awesome, and it's something that the movies got wrong time and time again. Is just the X Men, X Men meme, who the X Men are, sort of thing. It's like they're all kind of freaks and loners that come together to protect other people that get put down for being different and it's crazy good and this show is doing that element really well um which was always my favorite part of the x-men because out of all the marvel teams the x-men felt like it needs to exist the most yes um just from like a storytelling standpoint well that's the thing yeah Um, they were Pre Avengers, I'm pretty sure, because this is like when Jack uh, Kirby ooh. was working for Marvel. Still, was like the X Men. Uh, so, X Men might have been no X Men. Yeah, X Men was sixty three. I think Avengers might have even been the same year of sixty three. Um, I know the Fantastic Four were the first. I think, uh, but I think it was X Men after that because they had the Fantastic Four and Spider Man, yeah. and then they did X Men, and then Avengers. They were both released in the same year. 63? Uh, within a month or two each. Da, 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 da. Yeah. They don't say specific so. years. I think oh, it was 63. I think, right? I'm just shooting off the top of my uh, head. Yeah, I'm trying to, like, find, and they're not giving me specific dates. Oh. Oh, well. Oh, <laughs> That's well. okay. But, yeah. Um, same year, it's fine. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. This this is great. This shows the most faithful adaptation since of the comic books. Like, yes, it's yep. the comic book side. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, what happens next? Uh, oh, um, there's a bad guy who shows up. The uh, yeah, the, the new the new bad guy from the first episode that he tries to kill Magneto, yeah. but then he has a gun that basically gets rid oh, of the great. powers yeah. and it shoots Storm and said because she sacrifices herself. <laughs> To yeah. save Magneto. Then Magneto oh, gets no. super pissed off. And this is where, like, I thought he was going to turn again and, like, just be like mm. normal Magneto. But no, he just shows <laughs> off his power and the, what he's capable of doing, essentially. And it's just, like, so Flies cool. Flies everyone up into space. Flies everyone up to space, <laughs> including the guy, like, crushing the guy against a giant gold so coin mental. thing or something. Yeah. And then he's just like, but on the better part of my departed friend i will do better and like he kind of proves a point to yeah. humanity that he can change and then he obviously did show the x-men he is willing to change as well and while all that's going Beautiful. on as well um gene gives birth to um the baby oh that's right this cable. Happens all the same. yeah yep. little, little baby cable little baby cable um, well, before he's cable um and like yeah, wolverine's the one at the house and that was the most funniest line <laughs> in that. yeah obviously that yeah that was in the trailer logan he's coming who? Who? Apocalypse? Apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> no, the baby. <laughs> it's like that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, oh, we obviously go into next week's the, the following episode, 
where we oh, find okay. out. Before we do that, oh, before yeah. we get to the next one, I do want to ask you a Magneto question. What is mm -hmm. he, what are your thoughts on his drip? What what do you what about his costume? Hey, it's hot. <laughs> it's looking hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The man's like wearing wow. a cat suit. <laughs> I, I will say it's grown on me. I yeah, did not yeah. like this at first. I was like, that is the stupidest looking fucking but outfit I've so ever seen. it's so comic booky though. That's why I love it. Because <laughs> it's straight out of the comics. He yeah. wore that when he was becoming good in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, it looks stupid as fuck. Yeah. But it, I kind of dig it. Cause so it's, do I. It's, so it's, it's, it's great. I, I, yeah, I'm sure he's going to end up with a helmet or reds at some point. Oh, yeah. When they no, he, he definitely will. Being able. Yeah. But I, I love that we're seeing a different costume for Magneto, and it's so fucking dumb, but it's great. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, okay, that's my question. So, yeah, third episode. Um, This was my favorite of the three. Uh, I This is where the show feels like it's really ramping up. The first yes. two episodes had a little bit of filler, like sort of catch up to them. Yeah, well, it was just getting guess... like everyone back into the swing yeah. of things, being like, this is obviously what happened like in the past show 30 yeah, years ago. Yeah. We need to catch everyone up, and whoever hasn't seen it, we yeah, need to fill in yeah. the story for all these characters. Well, also, very briefly. Im important episode two thing we forgot is Magneto and Rogue are having a thing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a whole thing because that was a thing in the original yeah. animated show. Um, it was. But I don't remember that. So seeing this, I was like, what the fuck is this? This is weird. Yeah. Where has this come from? And I'm like, no, wait a minute. It, yeah, because I even do this? remember that in the the comics. Yeah. I can't remember which comic book run it was, but I think I've got a few. Um, yeah, where they were basically a couple because Rogue always felt outcasted even from the X-Men. And so she always, like, ended up going back to Genosha yeah, yeah, and everything, yeah, yeah. like, all the time to hang out with Magneto and basically like that. It's so, very weird, yeah. and obviously she can touch him in this because I yes. think she absorbed like Polaris's powers in either the comics or the show. I don't remember how it does it, but um, she can touch him due to I don't know magnetism magic. I'm not yeah, quite sure how it's, it works. It's something um, like that line. He like covers himself or something. It's something yeah, it's like that. I don't know. It's not quite explained, but it does piss off Gambit because yes. he does kind of catch them t t uh, like touching. Yep. And very um upset about it. And Gambit and always speaks in the third person, think. and they've done that amazing as well. He does. It's very funny. Gambit's yeah. great in this show, but He's they are cocking him hard they in are. this with Magneto. And it, it fucking pisses me off, the whole, like, you can't touch people thing, because they have collars that turn off people's powers, right? Like, that's a thing. That, that is they a have. thing. Like, yeah. Rogue can just wear one of those yeah. every now and then. <laughs> like, oh, that that's a thing. That's that's a very big story <laughs> element. I can't remember if they did. Have the they ever done show. that? They did in the comics. I don't um, because they try to do it in the in the movies where they basically try to try to find the cure and everything like that. She, she didn't want. She, she didn't got, want. No, it yeah, because in Last Stand, she cured herself. But, but yeah. fuck the movies. I mean, in this show right now, she's like, I can't touch people, and it's like you have these yeah. fucking collars right there. Yeah, yeah. I don't, so she mm, could. A hundred percent, she could. <laughs> that that always pisses me off, but I don't give a shit. Anyway, whatever. Uh, episode three, let's go back to that one because that was the best episode by far. Yes. Holy so we, shit. We find out so at cool. the end of episode two that another Jean Grey comes in and then there's two of them. Oh, and then we're like, oh right, my gosh, yeah. um, two of them. And then oh, it, no. obviously the third episode, Fire Made Flesh, uh, when a visitor arrives, yeah. obviously, yeah, Jean Grey, uh, the mansion goes all wibbly wobbly. And everything like that, it basically turns yeah. into a Tim Burton film. <laughs> it was so cool. The, the first, <laughs> like, half of this episode was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wanted more of this. I wanted this to be, like, a two-parter or a three-parter, just the whole, like, horror element um, of a the X-Men. But as, of course, I know how the animated show works. A lot of yeah. stories are episode-based, which is cool, too. Um, this was an amazing episode. Uh, it basically puts everyone through a nightmare sequence and what is yeah. actually really horrifying for a PG show. Oh, like, yes. There's blood and there's people like melting together. Yeah. My favorite scene with Morph in the shower with Wolverine. There's like great fucking moments in this episode alone. Yeah. Um, I love it. <laughs> yeah, no, that oh, was like that's a another phenomenal. thing. Can I talk about Morph? Because 
in the original series, I forgot who the fuck Morph was. Because Morph <laughs> did fuck all. I think yeah. Morph died in like the second episode in the original show and then like came back Eve, I think. Yeah, it was something because they did it with um, Sinister. So he basically was there and then he was one yeah. of the Sinister's like lackeys for a while because Sinister experimented on him because since he could like obviously morph into other people and everything like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like the reason why in the original show they didn't really give him much was because he was very much in a similar power scenario with like Rogue. That's thing because once Rogue touches someone, she can yeah, obviously true, get their powers. True, true. Morph can just like turn into a person and get their powers. So they kind of had that similar thing going on. And where in the original yeah, series, true. they were just like focusing on Rogue a lot more because Rogue was just such a more better, well rounded character. And a lot of people had more interest That's in her. That's true. Mainly because of her. The way she looked and everything back in the original show as well, uh, which they kind of changed her design a little bit. <laughs> Not really. It's fine. But what I do love is Morph in this show. I never oh, cared yeah. about Morph until now yep. because Morph is amazing. Morph yep. is a complete asshole in this yeah. show, but I fucking love him. Morph He's is probably going to be my favorite character by yelling the end of the season. At everyone. He's an asshole, and it's great. Like the yep. first episode when he just. He turns into Gene and he just starts laying into Wolverine at that club. Yeah, I was like, dude, we haven't seen you for like 30 years and we don't know who the fuck you are and you're here just bullying everyone. It's great. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Morth, he has a cool moment in the third one. Uh, yeah, we see more Rogue and Magneto melting into each other. That was fucking scary. That's enough to make like anyone like shit themselves. Um, yeah. The Gambit shit himself. Old man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't Yeah. It's enough for one cage in the handle. Um, <laughs> uh, then what happens? Oh, yeah, it's revealed that the clone of Gene is actually... The real uh, Gene. ...an agent of Sinister, right? Yeah, New well, Gene the, is the real Gene. New Gene is the real Gene. The yeah. Gene that was pregnant and had the, baby, had the baby was the clone. Was the clone. So yeah. Scott's like, oh, that's kind of fucking weird. And then he kind of just runs away for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he got kind then, of backburned a bit. He was uh, like, I don't know what to do. Clone Gene becomes Madeline Pryor, who this is straight out of the comics, uh, the Goblin yep. Queen, and basically, yeah, turns the house into evil Doctor Strange shit. Um, yeah. And then the real Kidnaps Gene shows the baby. up and basically defeats her. The baby gets kidnapped. It's yep. revealed that Sinister's behind it. Yep. A um, couple of guys go and fight Sinister, and this was cool because... Team to fight Sinister was what well, was like Magneto, Bishop, Morph, and Cyclops. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because like um, Morph four guys knew where got, but, like, Sinister yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But it's like you're sending. I love how it was doing stuff like that, where it's sending like four guys that aren't the mainstays. Apart yeah, from, like, they're, Cyclops they're kind. Magneto. It's kind of funny. Like, and what I've started to realize already in this like three episodes, and I wonder if they'll do it throughout the entire show. Um, is they're kind of giving so. Wolverine the back burner a bit he's they just kind are. of a background character which i'm actually happy they are because that's the thing over the past I, yeah. 25 years now everyone has been like wolverine that's been the x-men's icon for the past 25 well since hugh jackman 100 percent wolverine um that's that's been their biggest thing yeah. and that's the reason why they, they changed the design in the comic books and everything was to fit wolverine like in the modern yeah, comic yeah, books yeah. and stuff like that. but it's actually like no we're, we're putting wolverine on the back burner a bit everyone's like i know seen Hugh Jackman version has got to love like Hugh Jackman from now on and we'll just slowly reintroduce how he should be, essentially. Because uh, mm. that's the thing. This is mm. how, like, in my mind, I've always wanted a Wolverine like this for the live action films. Like, yeah. that snarky little guy that's always, like, <laughs> butting heads with people and stuff like that. The gremlin fucking dude, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're getting awesome. thrown all the I'm time. How many yeah. times he gets thrown already in the show? I'm just like, yes. So yes. I love it. I'm surprisingly okay with how little Wolverine is in this show. He's yeah. doing stuff. Like, he's there, but he's very much not the forefront. Cyclops no. is the main character of this show, and I never thought that that would happen. Yeah. Considering nobody has said anything about Cyclops for the last 30 years because he's just been bad in everything that since this yeah. show. Yep. And I'm so glad that he's the main character and everyone's loving it. Yep. Um, Storm was amazing until she lost her powers, but now she's off on her own other thing. That's going to um, be a whole Which is going to be crazy. It's going to be cool. I love, I love that Morph is getting time and Bishop yeah. is getting like a whole future story too. Yep. Because he's going to so be the cool. one They're that's going to turn um, Baby Summers into Cable. Baby Cable? Baby Cable yeah. into actual Cable. 
and everything. Maybe cable. I wonder oh, if they're man. actually going it's, to like show cool. cable like eventually in the show. Did they do that well, in the original? He was in. He was in the original because he okay. came back in time. Yeah, but that's told, right. He never told the, him them, that he was. Yeah, yeah. Summers. Yeah. No, but they did do cable. That's so, right. uh, so they know of, cable, but they don't know that it's obviously his kid. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, the, the animated show did everything. It was great. Even Deadpool showed up in that show. Yeah, that's like, right. They, they, no, I think that was actually my, fi- my first introduction into Deadpool. I'm pretty sure. I think that's the reason well, why he, I like Deadpool He showed up as so a couple flashes. He wasn't yeah. really in the show. I don't think he even spoke, but he no, was there. but he was like, there. Morph turned into him once and sh- some shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think oh, like it was that. like, I like the design. Of, of him, so that's why, like, I was like, oh, I want to read more about this character. Yeah, because he's fucking cool. Anyway, um, so that that's kind of where at with the third episode of the X-Men. Uh, the cliffhanger is that <clears throat> Bishop's taken the baby into the future to get yep. cured, because Sinister gave him some poison, <clears throat> and the clone of uh, Jean Grey just ran away. Uh, Wolverine didn't get a chance to hit on her. I thought that's what he'd try and do. No, he's hitting on two Jean Grey's. The, the original <laughs> Jean now. Is like she knows yeah, his memories yeah. and his feelings and like, stuff like that. Wolverine, there's two Jean Greys. Like you can go after the second one, but no, that's fine. No, he wants the real um, one. Uh, yeah. Well, okay, do, here's the thing as well. What happened? I am yep. DB. I have actually released all the episode information for the entire first season. Sorry, give us a two. Give us a second. I couldn't hear you. Cut out there. You're okay. You're, you're, you're back. Yeah, okay. internet's getting that, getting please. wacky. <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, I I am DB have actually released the full season one lineup of X Men animated show, like all the episode titles and descriptions. Oh, oh shit! Should we read through them? I mean, we can. I was just seeing if they did anything for season two because it's already got a season Ooh. two tab. So basically, um, oh. episode four is called. Motendo slash life death path part one. On her birthday, a nostalgic okay. Jubilee is forced to relive the X-Men's greatest adventures through an entertainment system transport her to a 16-bit video game. Oh okay. Alright. Uh, so it's a weird f- alright, sure. And it's a part two, right? There's a two part. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Because episode five is Remember It. Uh, Genosha prepares as Genosha pre- prepares to join the UN. Select members of the team head to the island nation to be there. Um, back at the mansion, behind the scenes press event risk airing the X Men's dirty laundry. Okay. Uh, then we got <laughs> Life okay. Death Part Two, which is Episode Six. Storm oh, is forced to face right. her worst fears in order to free herself. Episode Seven, Bright okay, Eyes. Cyclops in focuses X Men on finding. Trask, however, their team locates the sensible inventor. Uh, they realize that they've all just been played by a mastermind. And then episodes oh, no. eight, nine, and ten are all part one, part two, part three. Um, which Ooh. basically, yeah, the X Men must unite to face a new threat. The X Men work to settle score before it's too late. The X Men's dream is to put to a test as mutant human relations reach a tipping point. So that's like a final three parter um, for the end. Okay. I love that. That's very cool. Um, <clears throat> what do you think we are going to see? In the- I do have a question. They've teased at cameos. They've teased that like things are coming. People are coming. Characters who you wouldn't expect are coming. And I'm very curious of what you'd like to see this show tackle or like introduce. If they have Deadpool on it, I'll be happy. That, that's all they need. That's all they, that's all they need to I keep me happy. I knew you were going to say Deadpool. I knew it was fucking coming. <laughs> they could. I don't know if they will, um, considering they're chucking Wolverine on the back do you, burner. Do, do you I know think a lot of really, that is due to really Deadpool funny. 3. It would be really funny if like Ryan Reynolds like makes an animated appearance as his Deadpool in this. He just blips in for like a quick scene. It's just like it's a promotion for, the, for Deadpool and Wolverine. Amio? He just blips in a little bit. He's like, I am animated I I and I'm that. in 97. Wow. <laughs> It would be cool if it's even if it's Ryan Reynolds voicing him, but it's just Deadpool from this. I want this Deadpool. Yeah. Like it looks like the '90s Deadpool, and yeah, it's all that. Yeah, no. If I they can like bring in, yeah, the not comedic Ryan Reynolds Deadpool. If they actually bring in, like Deadpool as a villain, as he's meant to be, oh um, hell that would yeah, be, that would be pretty cool. Evil, de- yeah, fuck yeah, full on '90s mercenary Deadpool. Yes, I love it. Yeah. I would, I would 100 percent love to see that. 
Um, if they did like a Wolverine episode or like just a one-off where just some of the team end up somewhere and ended up fighting like Deadpool, do some Weapon X shit. Yeah, I know we got a lot of that in the original series, but maybe like a spin-off episode could be really cool. Yep, a filler one. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know what I really want to see. What do you want to see? What well, I want, you know what I want. Very... <laughs> what do you want? Ooh, I want to see absolutely fucking nothing. I just want X Men shit. I don't want any cameos. <laughs> People are like, oh, they can have Spider Man show up, or they can no, have uh, uh, no. Doctor Strange or Captain America because he was in the show. And I'm like, fuck off. I know they're in the show. Yeah, just I keep want it all of the X Men shit. I want all of these characters that no one knows, like Morph and Bishop, to like shine. I want yeah. Storm episodes. I want more Cyclops. I want more of this good shit. Yep. Give me Rogue and Gambit. I don't want, yeah, like, <laughs> I want that. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that would be pretty cool. I'm actually oh just going back through right now the original animated. There was an episode, um, yeah, with um, Deadpool. Yes. That did appear in everything like that. It kind of was as flashes, but then he actually did appear trying to hunt down Wolverine type thing. Oh, um, okay. As I, like a I, shape I just remember the flashes thing. What's what's going on here? I Is don't that, think how they that wasn't Morph? really Deadpool though. That was someone else. I think it was some shapeshift. I can't even remember. It might have been Mystique or Morph or something. It it's wasn't something along Deadpool. those lines. Yeah, it wasn't actual Deadpool. So it would be yeah. nice, yeah, to actually have like proper 90s deadpool anime or like come into this it would where be he, very cool it's like hunting down like a certain member of the x-men or something like that and mm. actually like do a complete 180 of what we used to seeing deadpool as now and everything like that, as this comedic guy because originally he was just a, a ripoff of um dead shot from yeah. <laughs> from batman oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah so it's very um, cool i've read dead just like couple uh encounters in x-men comics and yeah he's nothing like anyone uh, would recognize but yeah um the show of course has had cameos before there was an yep. entire episode in season five with wolverine and captain america yeah um black panther's shown up in the background spider-man spider-man up with them in rocked his. up yep yeah <clears throat> all of that which is whatever it's fine but i want more x-men stuff the best x-men stuff is when it's just the x-men i feel like when you throw them in with everyone else they kind of get a bit lost it just doesn't feel like that's their thing yeah. even yeah. though it's really cool to see everyone come together and i really hope we get to see the x-men in the mcu team up with like the avengers and the fantastic four and Eventually. i really hope the x-men is like i this just hope whoever <laughs> they get to be the new x-men that do come in yeah it is very much like this show like this show do i feel this like show. just sets do this show the level of where we want these x-men characters to be we want to see cyclops yeah. properly done in live action Put Wolverine on the back burner a bit. Like, that's the thing, because you got to think as well, and I think we've talked about this, like, so many times about um, Wolverine's character and uh, why well, I know I have with other people. Because Hugh Jackman has mm. such made such a legacy um, with that character where it's basically the same thing. Like, you can't have Iron Man without Robert Downey Jr. You know, like, that, no, that role really. so fitting. You can't mm -hmm. have Wolverine without Hugh Jackman type thing like he did yeah. that character so yeah. perfectly and there's a reason why he's coming back in deadpool and wolverine and everything like that even yeah. though he's like almost 60 um you know that's very true yeah but yeah um moral of the story if you're gonna make x-men do it like this because this is really fucking good yep um yep. <laughs> okay second half of today's podcast we will we'll get through it quick because it's been a long one Oh, yes, uh, it has. Bats. We're getting there. What are the bats up to, Barry? Give us the, the rundown. Batch. What have they been up to? They have been extracting. Oh, no, we Bad. talked about that one. We're talking about yeah, episode eight, one. Bad Territory. <laughs> Desperate intel. Hunter Wrecker tracked down a dangerous bounty hunter. Um, Fennec Chan is back in this episode because they're trying yeah, to find out back. what M count is. And they're just like, who, who knows uh, yeah, about M count? Yeah. Bounty hunters. Because they're looking for people with M count at the moment, set yeah. by the Empire. So this obviously... kind yeah. of a filler. Filler, very much. Um, I feel like this it, is the press proper filler I, episode. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I, it was definitely an interesting filler. I yep. was okay with that because they were finding stuff out. But they didn't find out anything till the episode after anyway. So yep. I, I guess it really was filler. But it brings back Fennec Shand, who I was actually kind of okay with saying... 
Some people were very much like, oh, sick of Fennec. She's been kind of in everything the past couple seasons of every Star Wars show. Um, yeah, yeah, it's but much, okay very much it. like tying oh, into like live action stuff and everything like that. But you know, yeah, it happens. Um, yeah. Crosshair and uh, Omega got some quality time together oh, yeah. a bit more and everything like that. Him yeah. trying to still be better, you know, like trying to fix himself That's true. in a way. Uh, which obviously then leads us over to episode at nine. The Harbinger, this is the one episode yeah. I've been looking forward to because they introduced ah. a, a great character from the Clone Wars back at it again. Yeah. Ventress is back. <laughs> she's back. She's back. And she's got hair now. She has hair now. <laughs> she's she has hair now. Emo um, goth chick hairstyle. But, you know, she's yeah, back. She's got a yellow that. lightsaber. She does. Um, And all of this is coming straight out of the Dark Disciple book, I think, which basically showed Ventress surviving. And doing stuff with Quinlan Voss, ending up with a yellow lightsaber. So if you were a little confused about why she's still alive and she has it, um, there's an entire novel you got to yep. read. Yeah. Um, I haven't read it, uh, but I knew of it. So that was enough for me to go, okay, I know Ventress is still chilling. Yeah. But um, I yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'm liking Ventress in this show. I don't know about you. Yeah, well, I feel like, like it was just like cameo here. I feel like like. Dave Filoni, yeah. like, I feel like a lot of people were like, oh, what happened to Ventress type thing? And and I feel like he just wanted to show that she's still alive, she's still around doing things, I think, because yeah. we haven't seen her. Or well, she know. wasn't in the final season of Clone Wars um, type thing. That's true. So maybe I feel like it was just I kind of know. fanfare. And it was just, like, kind of showing, like, who else would yeah. you get to do the whole Force training thing with Omega? Because obviously I we guess. find out that she is Force-sensitive, but she can't use the Force even though I feel like we already have seen her use it and it will be revealed later on that she does. I am very... Okay, so I, as much as Ventress did fuck all in this episode, yeah. um, I do like that she told Omega, like, you, you're going to use the Force. It's like, yeah. you don't have a high enough M count. You're not going to do yeah. it. I was like, yes, please, please let this be that she's not Force-sensitive. Like, yeah. I hope that that was the, like, she's got it in her blood enough for Palpatine to use it. Yeah, but not enough to use the force because she doesn't need to know how to use the force. We got yes, <laughs> it's like yes. There's bullshit. way too many um, force users. Um, yeah. Well, that's the thing because they're still all still feel... fucking alive. The Empire yeah. is shit at their job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Obviously. but yeah, I feel like if they do go down this direction now of having Omega just as like she has it, she has a high M count, but she doesn't use the force. I'll yeah, be happy. Please. And like, I just please. like the little subtle thing that she is good with animals and that she can maybe just sense things a bit better. But that's the thing. Cause then Hunter sure. can do the same thing as well. Like he can obviously track people long distances. He senses things way it's before like anyone true. else does. So I feel like it is like part of that 99 trait as well. Like makes her special as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that, but I don't yeah. want her lifting rocks. No, shit. no, when I don't Ventress want her to be up, like that. I was scared. <laughs> But it was just going to be the fuck from The Last Jedi where she stands there and lifts up all the rocks all of a sudden and then yep. can use the Force. I was very concerned that that's exactly what was going to happen in this episode. And as much as nothing happened this episode, I'm yep. pleasantly supply surprised. <laughs> oh, my. Um, but I'm, I, what I will say is I think the Bad Batch needs to step its game up towards the end because it's starting to get a little slow. Yeah, um, I feel like, yeah, these this, two section. episodes definitely um, made it slow. Yeah. But that's the thing, like, we've only got five episodes left now. Yeah. Like, they, they it's, gotta, it's they gotta just, start yeah. killing people off. I feel like this, yeah, they need to do filler so. stuff. We need it. Like that. And now that it's like, all right, we know what M count is. We know what we have to do. Let's do those things and do them over the next five episodes. No more filler, please. Just get right into the action. Get yep. right into the story again. 100%. Um, because that's the thing. Still at the end of all this, people are going to die. A lot of clones are going to die. Yes, please. The please Bad Batch, do. majority of them, aren't making it out alive. Um, I hope I so. I still want to figure out who the hell that Dark Trooper guy is that like destroyed yeah. all of Rex's people. I hope he's, he's still alive. I hope he comes back. And that's not just yeah, going to well, go sure off into another spin-off Clone Wars show. Oh, that's the thing. That's the the why knows, I, I, I'm freaking out at the moment that they're going to reveal soon that they are working on another animated show that's like a sequel to The Bad Batch and then it's going to keep continuing and continuing. Oh, I'm just like, I, I just not. want it to end, please. Go do a different animated show. 
I heard I I heard the um rumors that they did Ventress in this show because they kind of want to do a Ventress show. Yeah. After, like like another little not. spin-off thing. I hope not. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, as much as that would be kind of cool, maybe have some Ventress Quinlan Voss stuff leading into what the Kenobi shit did. Yeah. I don't want that. Like, no. it's too much. I and want new stuff. Good enough. <laughs> consider it it's 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 okay but it's like come on man you you can't do all of this and have it all be good yeah. bad batch is really slowing down starting to really slog um yep. and unless next episode opens like the force awakens and everyone fucking dies yeah i might be falling off the train a little <laughs> i will say yeah yeah well that's the thing um uh, episode yeah, 10 will be the X-Men next one and it's called the identity crisis so we'll see what that will be about. Ide- but- oh, that, might be, that might be the clone assassin then, Identity Crisis. Could might be. Be, that might be what that's find out who it finally is. And if it is Cody, I'm going to be like, they need to have Cody and Rex fighting in like the final episode or yeah. something like that. Rex has to kill Cody. If Rex has right. to kill Cody. That's going to be so dramatic. Mm. I hope so. I want more in this show. Yeah. <laughs> I want them enough- to do... More stuff with Star ah. Wars that aren't related to one another things and just do something different, do please. More good shit. It can be Go related back to if Old it's Republic. Good. Yeah. This that season was- again could have been like five episodes. It feels like yeah, they're dragging. It, it could it have out. been ten episodes. They could have just been like, all right. It here definitely you go. could have. Yeah. Ten would have been a perfect number. X Men's ten, and that definitely isn't slogging. <laughs> like- yeah. Ah, oh, whatever, Star Wars. You keep doing you. We know the rule. The rule we of balance. The rule. They're all a balance. Ah, <sighs> yeah. All right. Um. So I feel like that's cool. the podcast for yeah. this week. I'm um, sorry. I hope it having worked. Technical I, was, I hope it worked too. I, it looks like it's working on this side. So that's that's good. I have no um, idea. I'm about thanks to find out. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this week and sorry about missing a week and everything like that but we'll make sure to get back on the roster hopefully next time we won't have too many issues but you know we'll be around we'll still be talking about films movies whatever the things that come out that pick our interest we shall be around and we will catch you all yeah. next time here at we talk film thanks for coming out see you everybody have a have a lovely easter now let's go and kill some bugs and hell divers. <laughs> Yeah, for democracy. For liberty.